This is a second case of nevoid melanoma that I wanted to share with you. It was very kindly given to me by uh, Dr. Antony Nakalmakova of CSD Healthcare in Kiev, Ukraine. And it's exa an example showing a rather more nodular growth pattern than the previous one, which was very verrucous. Now, I think this is a particularly good example because at this low power magnification, there's a great clue. And that is the presence of very thin, attenuated, elongated uh, epidermal ridges, which on the right side are, are forming a fenestrated growth pattern. And this is, this is because the... Uh, Tumor cells are expansile, and it's rather nicely shown there. There's an expansile population of melanocytes which have pushed the, the Riti ridge and attenuated it. So when you look at a lesion like this at low power magnification, this expansile growth pattern and the Riti ridge appearance is a great clue. And if you see this, you need to spend more time looking at the lesion. Nevoid melanoma is often characterized by misdiagnosis. In fact, my favorite definition now is that nevoid melanoma is a case that you didn't look at properly and you called it a nevus. But if you spent a bit more time, you'd have got it right. So the, so the message from, from this is that when you are looking at your cases and you see what you think is just a nevus, don't just quick look and get rid of it and go on to the next case. Spend a bit of time at it. Two or three minutes is all it takes. But if you do that, then you'll not miss one of these lesions. And they're not that rare. Uh, the, the only value of using the term nevoid melanoma is really so that you realize you can mistake it for a nevus. The biological behavior of nevoid melanoma is no different from any other melanoma. Now, uh, to make a diagnosis, I think I've mentioned previously, but I'll go over it again. Uh, there are various features you look for. One is uh, subtle maturation impairment with depth. And if we look at the right hand side here and you look at the top of the lesion and then you look at the bottom of the lesion, uh, you, you can see that the nest size is smaller. Uh, 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 uh. So there's definite dim diminution in nest size with depth. Now this lesion is a bit more complicated because it's got this part here composed of hyperchromatic cells, and I think we'll find this represents a pre-existent nevus. So we need to look at that in high power, and then we'll look at that in high power. So I'll move that to the center and, and enlarge it. Now there's the top of the lesion there, and you can get an idea of the size of the nevus cells at the top and the size of the nests at the top. So they're pretty big. Now let's go back to the times two, and then we'll go down to the bottom here and have a look and see what's going on there. Um, there's nevus, and I think down here we now have melanoma again. Uh, yes, if we look here, the nevus cells are hyperchromatic, they have no cytoplasm. We go down here, and you can see that there are cells with um, vesicular nuclei and more abundant cytoplasm but they're not they are perhaps smaller than those were at the top so I think comparing the top with this there is impaired maturation but but um, it's it, it it is certainly it is certainly subtle now other features that you look for in a nevoid melanoma are, and I will look at this at higher power, in addition to impaired maturation, there's often subtle pleomorphism, although in this case it's not so difficult to see. Uh, the nuclei are 
slightly enlarged, I, I suppose. They're a bit irregular. And most of them have rather stippled chromatin. Sometimes in nevoid melanoma, you get very prominent nuclei, but that I don't see that as a feature in, in this case. And then one of the, uh, and lastly, you, you look for evidence of mitotic activity. I'm just having a hunt round to see if I can find any mitoses. It can be quite difficult when you're working from a, a scan case. So, but I know there's one somewhere. Yes, here's one here. So we, we found one mitosis here, and there actually are quite a few, but it's, it's a sort of a time-consuming job looking for them. Now, if you are thinking about nevoid melanoma and you're not absolutely sure, this is one case where I think immunocytochemistry has quite a lot to offer. I like uh, looking for proliferation markers, key 67 and cyclin D1. And HMB45 can be sometimes very useful. So I'm going to close this window and open another one. And this is HMB45. And uh, as you can see, I'll just straighten this slide because I hate, I hate things that aren't horizontal. There we are. And you can see this very striking expression or labeling of the melanoma, whereas the nevus is completely negative. And if you look at this at higher power, isn't that just beautiful? There's the melanoma is strikingly positive and the nevus cells are totally negative. If you wander around a bit, there's all that nevus is negative and there's the melanoma is positive. And if we go down to the bottom of the, the, the slide I, that I was looking at when we were looking for maturation, you can see there's the nevus which is negative and the, the, um, the uh, melanoma at the bottom is positive. So that's a, that was quite useful to, to, uh, to be able to see that. Now we'll also have a look now at key 67 um, which in this case is great. One of the problems with key 67 is that it, it, it's picked up by lymphocytes as well as melanocytes, and that can be a bit of a problem deciding what's what. But in this case, I'll just move it up to times 10. And here is very nice and clearly the melanocytes, the melanoma cells are expressing key 67, you see all over the place. And the nevus is utterly, utterly um, negative. I just thought I might, we'll have a look down at the bottom, and you can see, in fact, again, there's key 67 expression at the bottom of the lesion. Now, much I much prefer cyclin D1 to key 67, although I always used to do both. And here's cyclin D1, and. Uh, I'll just straighten that again. If we look at it, wow, even at this magnification, you can see the cyclin D1 expression in the melanoma and not in the nevus. So let's look at that at a higher magnification. Now, isn't that just gorgeous? And there we are, higher again. This is times 20. And you can see the melanoma is very convincingly positive and the nevus is convincingly negative. And again, I'll go down to the bottom of the lesion and see whether there's anything much. Well, again, you, you can see some expression at the base of the lesion. There is quite, it's quite nice there. And again, you can compare that with the uh, nevus cells at the top. And there we are at the bottom. So uh, the, the immunohistochemistry has been quite useful in this case. I sometimes used P53, which is the express, whereas in Neva it's not expressed. Some people like P16, but I, I must say I haven't found that des desperately helpful, so I don't bother with it. So in summary, this is a nodular nevoid melanoma, which has interestingly arisen in association with a pre-existent banal 
Nevis composed of small H and B forty five cyclin D one and key sixty seven have helped confirm the diagnosis. Thank you very much.